First up in today's exploration of cybersecurity tech news, no, the thumbnail of this video is not clickbait. The Borat malware is a thing, and cybersecurity company Sybil, Cybil, whatever they're called, have done a deep dive analysis on it. The Borat Rat is a remote administration tool, and it tries to be a script kiddie's best friend, as it's quite flexible and has a bunch of different features, making it a go-to tool for noobs who want to dabble in cybercrime. Of course, other than being called the Borat Rat, this tool has nothing to do with Borat. The developers probably only named it that for the meme, or maybe to get some free media attention, and if that was the aim, they have most definitely succeeded. I'm not sure what they were going for with the logo, I mean, it looks like some kind of green alien Borat, and on top of that, the developers have crowned it the number one remote administration tool. No citation on that, but anyway. The malware is interesting for reasons other than being named after Borat, in that it doesn't focus on a specific exploitation method, but rather it has a long list of features, one of which being HVNC, or hidden VNC. An attacker can remotely control the victim's PC via a hidden desktop, as in the malware spawns a virtual desktop that an attacker can use to launch programs and essentially use the computer as if they were the victim, or without their knowledge. Think of it like a new desktop on Windows, just one that only the attacker can control. In addition to that, the Borat Rat has a bunch of essential hacker features, like opening and closing the CD drive, hiding the clock, and so on. All listed under remote fun, because even threat actors get bored sometimes, I suppose. It has a bunch of other remote system functions, as well as password stealing features. The researchers also discovered functionality to steal Discord tokens, record a victim's webcam, and nab their keystrokes. Cybercriminals can also specifically compile the malware binary to act as ransomware, or to perform DDoS attacks. So the Borat Rat seems to be a miscreant Swiss Army knife, and judging from the screenshots provided by the researchers, it's probably sold on some cybercrime forum to noobs for a monthly fee. And there's no news of what Sasha Baron Cohen himself thinks of his brand being hijacked to sell malware. I imagine he's not thrilled, as he is known for being quite protective over Borat's image. In fact, he's currently suing an American cannabis company for $9 million after they used Borat on a billboard. Next up, a new variation of an old phishing technique has been published by one Mr. Dox. This ingenious phishing method has received so much attention in the media that it was actually noticed by state-backed hackers, and has now been observed in the wild being used by Belarusian government-backed hacker group Ghostwriter. Mr. Dox has dubbed his technique BITB, or Browser in the Browser, and whilst it's not completely new, it is very, very clever. This method exploits these things. These pop-up windows spawned when you want to log into a website using another service. Loads of websites use these, of course. Google, Facebook, Apple, and so on. And you know how it works. A window pops up, and you enter your creds. It's fairly straightforward. You get a quick and easy way to sign in, the original website doesn't have to deal with handling logon credentials, and Google makes you slightly more dependent on them. However, this new phishing technique enables an attacker to grab these logon credentials, and this is the proof of concept downloaded from Mr. Dox's public GitHub repo. Here we have what looks like a Chrome pop-up on top of a Chrome window. However, this Chrome pop-up is not a separate window at all. It's completely fake, rendered within the parent window. You can't even drag it out. The idea is an attacker could render a fake window like this inside of their phishing site, and a victim, whilst they may not trust the parent site, would trust this fake pop-up, and unwittingly give the attacker their creds. The benefit of this is an attacker has 100% control over all the elements of the window, so they can make it appear completely genuine. You even have a fake padlock, giving the illusion that this page is encrypted. And to make matters worse, it's really noob-friendly. An attacker can easily set up and modify the window's domain, path, title, and so on. And an iframe handles the actual phishing part of the page, which an attacker can craft to make it look like Google's logon page, for example. But you might be thinking this would be fairly easy to suss out. I mean, if you're running Chrome on Windows and see a macOS pop-up window, you're going to know something's not quite right. Well, Mr. Dox has templates for Chrome light mode and dark mode for both Windows and Mac. A miscreant can simply use a script to determine a victim's OS and color preference and then just show them the corresponding template. Of course, this does only use Chrome, but no doubt someone will make templates for other browsers. And in recent weeks, threat actors have already been using this exact method. For example, Google's threat analysis group observed Belarusian state hackers Ghostwriter using this technique to fish the creds of Ukrainian email accounts. 
it's not quite clear if the Belarusians have created their own implementation of this attack or if they just downloaded Mr. Doc's example from GitHub and used that. However, if you're getting a bit of deja vu watching this, that's because this method is not entirely new. I covered it a few months ago when phishing links were being spammed on Discord with the promise of free Nitro if you would only link your Steam account. But fake pop-up windows go back even further. The earliest ones I can remember were those fake antivirus pop-ups from the Windows XP era. There are of course a few ways to tell a fake window from a legit one. You could right click the window. If it's real then you won't get an inspect element option like you would if you right clicked part of a web page. Also a fake window can't be dragged outside of the parent one and it won't show as a separate entity in the taskbar or dock. So will we see more of this phishing technique in the wild or is the fact that this concept has been known about for some time and still isn't really used an indication that this just isn't going anywhere? Let me know what you think in the comments. This video was made possible by SecPro, a newsletter for cybersecurity enthusiasts and professionals who want to keep up to date with the cybersecurity landscape. SecPro is in fact run by the legendary Pact. Each weekly SecPro email is packed with analysis of trending attacks, the latest malware, red team, blue team tactics, a variety of free tools that the team has reviewed, and so much more. To make matters even better, the first 100 people that sign up for SecPro for free using the link in the description will get to choose a free ebook from Pact's expansive library of thousands of titles, renowned for being super high quality. Make sure to be one of the first 100 using the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and you know the drill. Make sure to tickle the notification bell and follow me on the Instagrams for behind the scenes content, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.